Testing. One, two, three, testing. You hear that okay out there? Testing, testing. This one okay? Yeah. Testing, last one. This one good? Yes. Uh. WCCP Lux Radio Theater. It is Christmas Eve, and boy, oh boy, do we have a whiz banner program for you tonight. Before we get started, we would like to share with you how you can participate in our show and be heard live on the radio. Let me introduce to you the master of our cards, Maxine White. Maxine, come out here and meet our lovely audience. Yes, isn't she lovely, ladies and gentlemen? Of course. In tonight's performance, there will be a few times we need the sounds of a live crowd, and that's where you come in, because half of our cast failed to show up tonight. <laughs> Maxine's card will tell you the type of noise we need, and the height of her card will let you know the volume that we need. The higher the card, the louder we need you to be. Maxine, can we try it out with one of our cards, please, now? Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. And we'll bring it back down. Excellent. Well done. Uh, a few of you were great at them. Some of you weren't. But hey, we'll work with it. It's not a problem. Fantastic job, ladies and gentlemen. Maxine, thank you, and be sure to bring home a candy cane for that lovely girl, Banner. Thank you very much. In just a few minutes, we'll be going live coast to coast. We really appreciate your participation. Please make sure the folks back in Kalamazoo can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. We'll be back in a minute. Okay, we go live in three, two, one. Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Company, the maker of Lux Flakes, brings you the Lux Radio Theater, starring Marie McCall, Max Payne, and Harry Jasbo Haywood, along with your Lux Crystal Star players, Libby Fondue, Maude Boscherbein, and Buddy Persons in Miracle on 34th Street. Ladies and gentlemen, your host for tonight, Mr. Buddy Persons. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. It is December 24th, 1949, and our Christmas present to you is the new Christmas classic of our time, Miracle on 34th Street. It's wrapped in a gay covering of laughter, tied in a bright ribbon of good humor, and decorated with three sparkling stars from the silver screen, Maureen McCall, Max Payne, and Harry Jasbo Haywood. And introducing our little star, Natalie Balsa. Of course, performing with these stars tonight will be your Lux Crystal Star Players. Libby Fondue, Maude Beauchemin, and me, Buddy Persons. This is a wonderful story for the whole family, and perhaps some families may be sitting happily around a Christmas tree as they listen. Others may be putting the final touches on this happy season as we speak. The lights and ornaments and the shining snow that can be made with Lux Flakes. Later on, we'll show you how to do this trick with Lux. But right now, it's curtain time for the play that proves there is a Santa Claus. Miracle of 34th Street, starring Marie McCall as Doris, Max Payne as Fred, and Harry Jack... Nick, Nick Nickelodeon. 
<laughs> it is, it is award-winning performance as Chris Kringle. It's Thanksgiving Day in New York City on a broad avenue adjoining Central Park. An annual event is joyfully being awaited. The spectacular parade presented by Macy's Department Store to herald in the Christmas season. Away from the crowd are two Macy's public relations experts. Certainly is a wonderful parade, Susan. Just look at that cloud. Gosh, what a giant. Giant, Mr. Gailey? There are no such thing as giants. Well, not now, maybe, but in olden days Really, Mr. Gailey? And you a lawyer! Well, what about the giant that Jack killed? You know, Jack and the Beanstalk. Everybody knows it's a fairy tale, and I agree with Mother. Fairy tales are silly. Come in. Good afternoon. I'm Susan's mother. My maid said that... Hello, Mother. I'm not from the parade. Mr. Gailey invited me. Hello, darling. Susie's told me quite a lot about you, Mrs. Walker. She's told me quite a lot about you, too. The man in the front apartment. <laughs> well, this is all part of a plot, Mrs. Walker. I'm very fond of Susie, but I, I also wanted to meet you. At least you're Frank. There goes Santa Claus. Oh, don't even mention the name. Why not, Mother? Well, that Santa Claus you see is a last-minute substitute. But why? Oh, remember the way the janitor was last New Year's? Oh my, tight as an owl. <laughs> I, uh, I see Susan doesn't believe in Santa Claus either. That's right, she never has. Well, that's the end of the parade, Mother. I've been thinking, it's Thanksgiving and there are only two of us. Couldn't we invite Mr. Gailey? Uh, well, I Oh, don't know. please, don't bother. I'll, uh, I'll just have a sandwich or something. Well, we have such a big turkey. Please, Mother, please. Well... Well, I suppose. Can I oh. ask you all right, Mr. Gailey? Susie, shh. <laughs> you asked fine, Susan. Dinner's at three, Mr. Gailey. Hello? Mrs. Walker? Uh, yes, Mrs. Shellhammer? Your maid said you went Thanksgiving dinner, but I just had to tell you. Your Santa Claus was stupendous. Well, thank you. Mr. Macy himself wants him to be our toy department Santa Claus. Oh, fine. Can you hire him? <laughs> oh, I already have. Oh, he's a born salesman. I just feel it. Good. We'll talk about it in the morning. Thanks for calling, Mrs. Shellhammer. Ladies' lingerie, linens, and luxe plates. Here he is, Mrs. Shellhammer. Here's Santa Claus. Oh, thank you, Alfred. Thank you. Good morning, Santa Claus. Good morning. Now, before you go to the toy department, here's a list of toys that we have to push. Oh? You know, things were overstocked on. Now, you'll find that a great many children will be undecided as to what they want for Christmas. And when that happens, you immediately suggest one of these items. Do you understand? I certainly do. Fine, that's fine. Now take the list and Alfred here will show you to your throne in the toy department. And don't you forget, you're working for Macy's. Are you 
you yelling Santa Claus? Why, of course I am. What do you want for Christmas, little boy? I want a fire engine with a real hose that squirts real wet water, and I won't do it in the house. I'll only do it in the backyard, I promise. And mm -hmm. I promise you'll get your fire engine. You see, Mama? I told you he'd get me one. That's fine. That's just dandy. You wait here, Mortimer. Mama wants to thank Santa Claus, too. Yes, madam? Say, what's the matter with you? Now, now, now. What's the trouble? I told you before, didn't I? Kid wants a fire engine, but there ain't one to be had anywhere in town. Gimbals ain't got any. Macy's ain't got any. Nobody's got any. My feet are killing me, and you say, okay, he gets a fire engine. But you can get those fire engines at Schoenfeld's on Lexington Avenue. Only four fifty. A wonderful bargain. Schoenfeld's? Yes. <laughs> hey, I, I don't get it. Oh, I follow the toy market very closely. Macy's sending people to other stores? Yes. Are you kidding? No. The one important thing is to make the children happy. Whether Macy's or someone else sells a toy doesn't matter. Don't you feel that way? Oh, me? Yes. Well, yeah, sure, only I didn't know Macy's did. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Who's next, please? Right this way to see Santa Claus. All right, little girl, you're next. Of course, little girl. You want some roller skates? Well, you shall have them, too. Mama, Mama, he's going to bring me some roller skates. And he has some fine skates here at Macy's, haven't you, Santa Claus? Oh, they're good skates, all right, but, but not quite good enough. Now, I've left some really wonderful roller skates at Gimbel's. I'm sure Gimbel's have just what this little girl wants. Very good skates. Mrs. Shellhammer? Are you Mrs. Shellhammer? Uh, Gimbel's? That's just what he did say. Gimbel's. The sales lady said I should speak to you. Gimbel's? I just wanted to congratulate you and Macy's on this wonderful new stunt you're pulling. Gimbel's? Imagine a big outfit like Macy's put the spirit of Christmas ahead of the commercial. Gimbel's? From now on, I'm going to be a regular Macy customer. All right, Mortimer, we're going! <laughs> Gimbals! Third floor, Silly Buddy, Swing Shots, and Santa's Village. And there's a tour equipment over there, Mr. Bailey. You certainly know all about Macy's stores, don't you, Susan? Well, that's because my mother works here, but I also think it's silly when we're here to see Santa Claus. Well, I just feel that when you've talked to him, you Okay, might... Mr. Gailey, I'm certainly willing to try. Going up. Well, well, what a fine young lady, eh? What's your name, little girl? Susan Rocker, what's yours? Mine? Chris Pringle, I'm Santa Claus. Uh, oh, you don't believe that, eh? Uh-uh. You see, in my mind, Mrs. Walker. Oh? Oh. 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 But I must say, it's the best thing Santa Claus I've ever seen. Really? The beard, for instance. It doesn't have one of those things that goes over your ears. Ha! <laughs> That's because it's real. Just like I'm really Santa Claus. Now go ahead, pull it. Oh my, my goodness, it is real. Yes, yes. And now, what would you like me to bring you for Christmas? Nothing, thank you. No more I want, more that we'll get. Sensible doesn't cost you much. Oh. That's quite right, Susan. Oh, hello, Mother. Hello, Mr. Gailey. Hello. Uh, the explanation for this is very simple. Uh, your mother's maid sprained her ankle. She had to go home, so she asked me to bring Susie down to you. And as long as we were here, I, well, I figured she might as well say hello to Santa Claus. He has real whiskers, Mother. Susan, would you mind standing over there a minute? If you want me to. I, uh... I shouldn't have brought Susie to see Santa, is that it? Now you're making me feel completely heartless. I'm sorry. Don't you see? <clears throat> I tell Susan that Santa Claus is a myth, and you show her a very convincing old man with real whiskers. <laughs> Whom is she to believe? <laughs> yeah, that's right, isn't it? When Susan was a baby, her father and I were divorced. And ever since then, I've protected my child by teaching her realities. If you don't believe in fairy tales and fantasy, you can never be hurt or disillusioned. We were talking about Susie, Mrs. Walker. And I must ask you to let me raise her as I see fit. All right, dear, the store is going to close soon. We'll run along to my office. Alfred said you wanted to see me, Mrs. Walker? Oh, um, yes, come in. It's nice to see you again, Susie. It's nice to see you, too. I, um, I'd be grateful if you'll please tell Susan that you're not really Santa Claus. 
that there actually is no such person? Oh, but Mrs. Walker, not only is there such a person, but here I am to prove it. No, 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 no. <laughs> you misunderstand. I, I want you to tell her the truth. Now, uh, what's your real name? Chris Kringle, and I always tell the truth. Susie, I'll bet you're in the first grade. Second grade. I mean your real name. Well, that is my real name. My goodness, the second grade? Very well. I have your employment card right here. I'll look it up on that. That's a very cute dress you have on, Susan. It's amazing. It's we get 10% off. Oh. <laughs> so, you always tell the truth, do you? Mm-hmm. Look at your employment card. Name? Chris Kringle. Address? Brooks Memorial Home, Great Neck, Long Island. <laughs> you may call the home if you'd care to confirm that, Mrs. Walker. It's a home for elderly gentlemen. Would you also like me to confirm this? What's that? Date of birth. As old as my tongue and a little bit older than my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Place of birth. North Pole. Now really. Why, I believe you doubt me, Mrs. Walker. And this stops everything. Next of kin. Oh, that. Dasher, Dancer, <laughs> Rancer, and Vixen. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to do this, Mr. Um... Gringle. <laughs> But, uh, the Santa Claus we had two years ago was back in town, and I really feel that we owe it to him, too. Have I done uh, something wrong? No, 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 no. It, it's just that we feel... <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? This is Mrs. Schillhammer, Mrs. Walker. Drop whatever you're doing. Mr. Macy wants to see us immediately. Oh, I'll be right up. Uh, I'm afraid I'll have to be very abrupt with you. I have to see Mr. Macy. You'll be paid for the full week, Mr. Kringle, and I'll send your check to that address. Mr. Macy will see you now. Oh, uh, come right in, Mrs. Walker, Mrs. Shelley. Thank you, Mr. Macy. Now, about this new policy you two initiated. Uh, um... Macy Santa Claus sending customers to Gimbals. But, but I, I just you don't have to explain a thing. Just look at my desk. 42 telegrams and over 500 phone calls. Grateful parents expressing undying gratitude to Macy's department store. Why, you, you don't say. And from now on, our Santa Claus will continue in this manner. And every salesperson in the store will as well. You mean that if we haven't got what the customer asked for... We're to we're... send him where he can get it. No high pressuring and no forcing a customer to take something he doesn't really want. I think that's wonderful, Mr. Macy. Why, we'll be known as uh, uh, the, the helpful store, the friendly store, the store that places public service ahead of profits, and consequently, we'll make more profits than ever. <laughs> as for you, Mrs. Walker, Mrs. Shellhammer, you'll find a more practical expression of my gratitude in your Christmas envelopes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yes. And tell that wonderful Santa Claus I won't forget him either. A matter of fact, I'll tell him myself in the morning. Yes, indeed, Mr. Macy. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Macy. And thank you again, sir. Oh, imagine, a bonus. Yes. Well, what's the matter with you? Mrs. Shellhammer, I just fired him. Who? Santa Claus. Oh, no, 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 no. You couldn't have. But I did. He's, he's crazy, Mrs. Shellhammer. He really thinks he is Santa Claus. I don't care if he thinks he's the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Find him! Act 2 of Miracle on 34th Street will continue in a moment. Well, Libby, have you given Santa your Christmas list? Yes, indeed, John. And number one on my list is a pair of Chinese pajamas with a three-quarter coat and little upstanding car. Just like the ones Mata Torin wears in Rogue's Regiment. Perhaps you better have the wardrobe mistress of Universal International show Santa what you mean. Well, I'm sure Dick Powell or Stephen McNally could give him a good description. They found Mata very glamorous in this modern story of the French Foreign Legion. And what a villain Vincent Price is in Rogue's Regiment. Mm -hmm. I was on the edge of my seat through the whole picture. And talk about your pair of pajamas. <laughs> Well, they were very special. Maya liked them so well, she had four pairs made for her personal wardrobe, and she was delighted when they told her she could lux them. That's about the easiest care in the world, especially now with the new Tiny Diamonds of Lux, another triumph of the famous Lever Laboratories. These Tiny Diamonds are so much faster, they burst into suds the instant water touches them. 
and make wonderfully rich suds that last and last. Dough colors look marvelous when they're luxed. So fresh and new. No wonder smart girls say they won't risk wrong washing methods. Tests prove that with gentle care with Lux Flakes really makes a difference. Lux slips and nighties stay new looking three times as long, and that's just like getting three pretty slips for the price of one. A really thoughtful Santa would put a box of Lux Flakes in every lingerie gift tonight. We'll return to WCCP's Miracle on 34th Street in just a moment. But as this most wonderful time of year, we would like to talk to you about that new and wonderful invention that's been sweeping across the nation. Are you talking about the television, buddy? I sure am. There may be a few of you listeners out there tonight who are lucky enough to already own one of these new fling-fangled television sets and get the pleasure of watching such great shows of Toast on the Town, Texaco Star, Theta, and Howdy Doody. But let's not forget about all the great local programming that airs morning, noon, and night. You mean the wonderful shows that let you know about what's going on in your community? It's like you're a mind reader, Lippy. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Take, for instance, a station known as RCTV. <laughs> this may sound foreign to some of you out there, but if you're in the quaint little town of Reading, Massachusetts, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I have many friends in Massachusetts. I know they're listening tonight. <laughs> As they should, but I bet they'll also appreciate the hard work the good people of RCTV are doing during the holidays, such as getting out there and recording holiday shows and events <laughs> happening around that glorious little town. And as important as the holidays are, let's not forget all the great work they do during the year, too. They cover different town government meetings to assist the public with their knowledge of their town government. They educate the youth about the importance of having a voice in this world and all about new and fancy technology of the future. Golly, Lippy, you know exactly what's going on in my head. And now I know we both love their theme song. RCTV is good for her, good for him, good for us. RCTV is good for them, already why? Ah, thank you, RCTV. And now back to our producer, Mr. Buddy Persons. Act two of Miracle on 34th Street, starring Maureen McCall as Doris, Max Payne as Fred, Natalie Bosa as Little Susan, and Harry I. I did right. Yeah, that's Nick, Nick Nickelodeon. Nick Nickelodeon. <laughs> Nick Nick Pennywhack. That's for sure. <laughs> it was a frantic few hours that Doris spent last night, rushing around to Brooks Memorial Home in Long Island and assuring Chris Kringle that Macy's wanted him back as Santa Claus. Now Chris is again presiding over the crowded toy department with, while in her office, Doris and Mrs. Shellhammer. Don't you understand, Mrs. Shellhammer? That nice old man with the nice white whiskers insists that he is Santa Claus. Why, he's out of his mind. What if he should have a, a fit or something? Oh no, I've got to tell Mr. Macy. Yes, but maybe he's only a little crazy. Anyway, you can't be sure until he's examined. We'll send him to Mrs. Sawyer. Sawyer? In personnel. She's paid to examine employees, isn't she? And now, by the way, what do you think of this? What is it? A full page ad. Macy's is running in tomorrow's newspapers. Macy's is running it? But it's about all the other stores, Gimbals and Sacks. I know, I know. Mr. Macy's idea to help our customers find what they want. It's revolting, isn't it? <laughs> that Santa Claus certainly has started something. Oh well, I'll get a hold of him at his lunch hour and send him up to Mrs. Sawyer. So I changed my clothes, Mrs. Sawyer, and came right up. Oh, well then, that's your own beard, hmm? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Interesting complex in the back of that. Why do you carry a cane? Always carry a cane, Mrs. Sawyer. Well, that is, when I wear street clothes. Hmm. I carved this cane out of a runner from one of my old slaves. What's that? What's that? With a fine, solid silver top. Who was the first president of the United States? What? Oh, give me a difficult one. Like, who was... Who was vice president under James Monroe? I am conducting this examination. The answer is Daniel D. Tompkins. <laughs> yes, you're a rather nervous woman, aren't you, Mrs. Sawyer? Mm -hmm. Tell me, do you, uh, do you get enough sleep? My personal habits are no concern of yours. Now, what hand am I holding up? Right hand. How many fingers do you see? Three. Oh, dear, oh, dear, you bite your nails, too. <laughs> Stand up now, feet together, arms extended. Muscular coordination test. I've taken dozens of these tests. Mrs. Sawyer, are you happy at home? What? <laughs> that will be all, Mr. Kringle. The examination is over! 
Thank you. And it may interest you to know that I've been happily married for 22 years. Very happily married! Delighted to hear it. Goodbye, Mrs. Sawyer. Miss Perrell! Yes, ma'am? Get Mrs. Walker on the phone. Yes, ma'am, but your mother, Mrs. Sawyer, she's called four times already. Will you tell my big, fat mother to shut up and mind her own business? Here's Mrs. Walker, ma'am. All right. <clears throat> Hello. Oh, I was just going to call you, Mrs. Sawyer. Oh? There's a Dr. Pierce stopping by this afternoon at 3. Who's Dr. Pierce? He's the physician at the Brooks home. I thought we might discuss Mr. Kringle's case with him. Well, there's hardly any point to discussing it, Mrs. Walker. Obviously, the old man should be discharged! So, Dr. Pierce, Kringle should be dismissed immediately and sent to a mental institution. Oh, now, just a minute, Mrs. Sawyer. Ah, he's deluded, saying that he's Santa Claus. It's a delusion for good. I found he only wants to be friendly and helpful. It does seem that way. If you tell Chris there is no Santa Claus, I grant you he'll argue the point. But he won't do anything irrational. His whole manner suggests aggressiveness. Look at the way he carries that cane. Mrs. Walker, naturally I can't discharge that loony. So when he exhibits his maniacal tendencies, please realize the responsibility is completely yours! Well, I'm right back where I started. Mrs. Walker, I assure you, Chris Kringle has no maniacal tendencies. But if there's the slightest possibility of his causing any trouble... What trouble? All that needs to happen is a policeman asks his name. Chris Kringle, Clang Clang, and Macy Santa Claus lands up in the psychopathic ward. Well, you can prevent that very simply. Now, there must be someone here at the store who could rent him a room. Then they could both come to work together. I just as soon he avoided that long train ride to... Try, bleh, excuse me. He avoided that long train ride to Long Island anyway. You mean sort of take custody of him? Mm-hmm. Do you think that Mr. Kringle would agree to that? Oh, I'm sure he'll agree. Well, in that case, now let me see. Who do I know who could rent him a room? I'm glad to have dinner with Mr. Kringle. Oh, thank you, Susan. I'm also very, very glad to go to live next door to Mr. Gailey. Oh, why? Because it's nice to talk to you. Oh, I say, what a fine young man that Mr. Gailey is, eh? Just think. Allowing me to share his apartment, a mere stranger. He did it because I hinted to him. Oh. Well, anyway, I'm very grateful. Shall I tell you what I did in school today? Oh, by all means. Any games? Yes, a very silly game, too. Oops. Oh? They played zoo, and each child was supposed to be an animal. Oh, but Susan, they were just pretending. But that's what makes the game so silly. Oh. Well, of course, in order to play games, you need imagination. Oh, uh, that's when you see things see things that are not really there, huh? Well, yes, yes. But you know, to me, imagination is a place all by itself. Now, you've heard of the French nation. Mm hmm And the British nation. Yes. Well, this is the imagination. A very interesting place, too. Now, how would you like to be able to make snowballs in summertime, eh? What? Or be the Statue of Liberty in the morning, and in the afternoon fly south with a flock of geese. I'm mm, quite sure I'd like it, but... Oh, it's very simple. Really? Well, anyway, look here. The next time they play zoo, you can be a monkey. I don't know how to be a monkey. Don't you? <coughs> oh, I'll show you. Now, first, you bend over a little like, uh, like this, see? Now let your arms hang loose, see? Like this? Yes, that's fine, fine. Now put your hand over here. <clears throat> Start scratching, see? That's it, that's it, that's excellent, Susan. That's as fine a bit of scratching as I've ever seen. Yes. Now, now you start chattering. Chattering? Yes, now listen. Ooh, 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 ooh. And see, and keep scratching. Now then, look here, we'll do it together, see? Chatter and scratch, scratch and chatter, see? That's fine, Susan, fine, you're doing beautifully, beautifully, yes. Susan? Susan, are you still awake? Uh-huh. I'm uh, just coming to say goodnight, Susan, that's all. Now look here, about Christmas. There must be something you'd like for Christmas. Well, I certainly thought about something, Mr. Kringle. You have? 
Well, what is it, eh? Tell me. It's right here on my table, see? Oh? I chose a page of a magazine. It's a picture of a house. Oh, ho! That's what it is you want. A doll's house. Colonial architecture. Oh, not a doll's <laughs> house. A real house. A real house? Yes, and if you're really Santa Claus, you can get it for me. Now, 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 wait a minute, Susie. What could you possibly do with a big house? Let me do it with my mother. In the backyard with a big tree to put a swing on. And a garden and... Oh, well, I can discuss it. Susie! Susie, could I, uh, could I keep this picture just, uh, just in case? I guess so. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Well, Mr. Gailey's waiting for me. Good night, monkey. Good night, Mr. Kringle. Good night, Mr. Kringle. Take whichever bed you want, Mr. Kringle. You're very kind, really. Tell me, Mr. Gale, just what is it you do for a living? Oh, I'm a lawyer. Hayslip, Hayslip, Sherman, and Mackenzie. Oh, and you, uh, you like living here in the city? Well, it's convenient, but someday I'd like to get a place on Long Island. Huh? Not a big house, just one of those junior apartment deals around Manhasset. Oh, one of those little colonial houses, eh? Yeah, yeah. A little colonial house would be swell. Good, good, yes. You're, uh, you're quite fond of Mrs. Walker, aren't you? <laughs> A lot of good it does me. She lives in a cast iron shell that's just a little too difficult to penetrate. Oh. Well, you must try a little harder, Mr. <coughs> Gailey. You know, Mrs. Walker and that child are a couple of lost souls. And it's up to us to help them. Oh? Yes, she, uh... Oh, well. Shall I turn out the light? Oh, no, 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 no. No? I'm not going to be cheated out of this. You know, all my life I've been wondering about it. Now I'm going to find out. Now tell me. <laughs> Does Santa Claus sit with those whiskers outside or inside of the covers? Oh, <laughs> outside, of course. Outside, by all means. The cold air makes them grow. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, uh, come in, Mrs. Walker. Come in. Thank you, Mr. Mason. I've just heard something very exciting. You have? Well, let me tell you something exciting. Our policy of being kind to customers has tripled our sales. <laughs> now, what do you think of that? That's wonderful, Mr. Macy. And Gimbals thinks it's wonderful, too. Gimbal? Gimbals is adopting the same policy. Well, is that so? And it gives me an idea. As long as Gimbals is doing the same thing, why not some pictures for the newspapers? Pictures? Yes, of you and Mr. Gimbal. Shaking hands. Shaking hands. <laughs> R.H. Macy and Gimbal? Well, well, yes. Well, yes, yes. Why not? With Santa Claus. It's a great idea, Mrs. Walker. Macy and Gimbal shaking hands. <laughs> okay, that's enough pictures, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Gimbal? Come on, R.H., now we'll go over to my store and take some really good pictures. <laughs> Just a minute. Uh, I have something here for Santa Claus. Here you are, Mr. Kringle, a check in appreciation of all you've done. Mr. Macy, why, that's most kind of you. I didn't think you were that generous, R.H. That's quite a check. What are you going to do with that, Mr. Kringle? Well, I have a friend, a Dr. Pierce. He needs a new x-ray machine. Buy the machine through the store, 10% discount. Nonsense. Come to Gimbal's. What a finish it at cost. <laughs> oh, keep it up, gentlemen. Keep it up. At this rate, my friend will have a whole new hospital. <laughs> <laughs> How did the pictures turn out, Mr. Kringle? Oh, fine, Alfred. Fine. How about a game of checkers during lunch, eh? Oh, uh, not today, Chris. I, I don't feel so good. Oh? What's the matter, Alfred? Oh, nothing much. You remember I was telling you how I like to play Santa Claus over at the Y and give out packages to the kids? Yes. Well, I was telling Mrs. Sawyer about it, and she said that's very bad. That psychologically, it's all wrong. Wrong? To be nice to children? Well, she says guys who play Santa Claus do it because when they was young, they must have done something bad, and now they're doing something good, they think they make up for it, see? It's what she calls a guilt complex. Alfred, how old are you? Seventeen. Seventeen? Doesn't seem you've had time to be guilty about anything. Alfred, what else has she found wrong with you? Oh, uh, nothing much. Just that I hate my father. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it, but she says I do. Excuse me. Hey, ain't you gonna have lunch? Later. 
right now. I have an appointment with Mrs. Sawyer. What do you mean breaking into my office like this? Are you a licensed psychiatrist? What business is it of yours? I have great respect for psychiatry and great contempt for meddling amateurs who go around practicing it. Oh, shut up! Your job here, I gather, is to give out intelligence tests. Instead, you try to pass yourself off as a psychologist. You ought to be horsewhipped. <coughs> Taking a boy like Alfred and fill him up with complexes and phobias. I think I'm better equipped to judge that than you. Just because Alfred wants to be kind to children, you tell him he has a guilt complex. <laughs> Having the same delusion, you couldn't possibly understand. Oh, it seems to me that the patient is running the clinic here. Don't you wave that cane at me! Either you stop analyzing Alfred, or I'll go straight to Mr. Macy and tell him what a contemptible fraud you are. Oh, get out! Get out of here! Get out of here before I have you thrown out! There's only one way to handle a woman like you. Maybe this will knock some sense into you. Speaking of the doctors, they said they'd given you some tests. Oh yes, same old tests. Except this time you failed to pass them. Chris, you deliberately failed. Why? Why? Well, because I had great hopes for Ed. I had a feeling Mrs. Walker was beginning to believe in me, and now? Well, now I discover she was only humoring me all the time. But this wasn't Doris's idea at all. Mrs. Sawyer had you sent up here before she even knew about it. But why? Why didn't she come to me and explain things? Well, because she didn't want to hurt you. Oh. Well, it's not just Mrs. Walker, it's... Well, now take Mrs. Sawyer. She's contemptible, dishonest, deceitful. Yet she's out there and I'm in here. If that's normal, I don't want it. But you can't just think of yourself, Chris. What happens to you matters to a lot of other people. People like me, who believe in what you stand for. And people like... Well, like Susie, who are just beginning to. Chris, you're letting us down. I, well, Fred, maybe you're right. I, of course you're right. I ought to be ashamed of myself. Let's get out of here. Now, wait a minute. You flunked your mental examination, and good. Oh, 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 yes, so I did. Well, anyway, you're a lawyer. You fix it. Hey, look, now, I can't just be going around. Now, I won't let you down, and you won't let me down. Chris, now take it easy. Look, there'll have to be a hearing. If you're going to be committed, it has to be before a judge. Well? Well, if I can do anything at all, it'll have to be in a courtroom. Now sit tight, Chris. I'll get an idea. I have to get an idea. You, uh, sent to me, Mr. Macy? I certainly did, Miss Sawyer. I brought my family to the toy department to see our Santa Claus, and our Santa Claus isn't there. He's in Bellevue. Yes, Mr. Macy. Because he's a lunatic. Yes, sir. Lunatic by foot! Now you listen to me, Sawyer. You get that case dropped right away or you'll have another lump on your head to match the one he gave you. But it's out of my hands. Mr. Kringle goes to court in the morning. We'll just see that he's back in the toy department by afternoon. Now get out of here! searching for. Oh, good, good. If I'm going to win this case, I'm going to have to have public opinion, and plenty of it. 
And publicity is just the way to do it. Thanks. And, uh, so long, Mr. Sawyer. Mr. Gailey! But Mr. Gailey! <laughs> Just look at these newspapers, Chris. Yeah, Evening Dispatch. Doctors doubt sanity of center who launched Goodwill Campaign. Oh my! Daily Bulletin. Macy's Santa Claus to have lunacy hearing. Hmm, what's this one? The New York Express. Is Chris Kringle crazy? Court case coming, kitties cry calamity. <laughs> You've driven the United Nations clear back to page five. Well, get a good night's sleep, Chris. We go before Judge Hopper at 10 tomorrow morning. We now pause for station identification. This is WCCCP, the Colonial Chorus Productions. Our stars will return for Act 3 of Miracle on 34th Street in a moment. When a new player signs a contract with 20th Century Fox, she soon gets well acquainted with Miss Maud Boschevine, head dramatic oh, coach. Maud, do you like to watch your pupils perform in a picture? Oh, of course, buddy, because I take personal interest in them. I'm especially proud of Betty Grable <coughs> and her new picture, When My Baby Smiles at Me. Betty's become a really fine dramatic actress. She certainly has. She and Dan Daly are as magnificent as a couple of vaudeville hoofers. And Betty's costumes in When My Baby Smiles at Me gave me a thrill. And I was amazed how many things the wardrobe department washed with Lux flakes. It reminded me of my theatrical days when I was on the road and lived in a couple of trunks. A box of Lux Flakes each? That's absolutely true, buddy. I was never without it, in my hotel or at the theater. <laughs> well then, you've probably discovered that the new tiny diamonds of Lux are more powerful than ever. They're so much faster and richer. Do more for you, too. They remove soil, which other types of suds can't, leaving things cleaner and fresher. And Lux Flakes keep colors lovely. You're right there. That's why it's foolish to risk wrong washing methods that may fade colors. Actual tests show that with gentle Lux Flakes care, colors stay lovely up to three times as long. That's a good tip for girls who get nice blouses and sweaters for Christmas. Right you are, and thank you for coming tonight, Mom Beauchevine. Beauchevine, and it's my pleasure, buddy. And there's something in addition to Lux Flakes that I would like for Christmas. What's that, Maud? I would love someone to give me a television so I can watch all the great programming on RCTV. <laughs> oh, Maud, that would be a Christmas miracle, wouldn't it? Then you just turn that dial to Verizon 31, 32, and 33, or Comcast 9, 22, and 99, and you'll be able to see all the great programming at your leisure. If Santa Claus is listening, I'm sure hoping he'll make all my Christmas dreams come true so I can spend Christmas Day watching the great local programming of RCTV. Absolutely. And of course, that's why we all sing. RCTV is good for her, good for him, good for us. RCTV is good for them, already wide. So we here at WCCP would like to thank you and our helpful friends at RCTV. And we hope the good people of Reading, Massachusetts have a wonderful Christmas and a very happy new year. The curtain rises on the third act of Miracle on 34th Street, starring Marie McCall as Doris, Max Payne as Fred, and uh, Nick Custodiel as... <laughs> <laughs> For a few weeks, a jolly elderly gentleman named Chris Kringle has been working minor miracles as Macy Santa Claus. Now his sanity has been seriously questioned, and in a crowded courtroom, Judge Harper listens patiently as Assistant District Attorney summons Chris to the witness stand. Now, ah, uh, this is not a trial, Mr. Kringle. It's just a hearing, so you don't have to answer any questions. <clears throat> now then, ah, uh, where do you live, please? Well, it seems to me that this hearing will decide, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kringle, do you believe that you are Santa Claus? Of course I do. That's all, Your Honor. The state rests its case. Oh, well, Mr. Daly. Your Honor, Mr. Mark intends my client is not sane because he believes he is Santa Claus. 
an entirely logical conclusion. Anyone who thinks he's Santa Claus is crazy. Your Honor, you believe yourself to be Judge Hopper. Yet no one questions your sanity because you are Judge Hopper, do they? Mr. Pringle is the subject of this sanity hearing, not I. Well, Your Honor, I intend to prove that Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus. Mr. Mara, please approach the bench. I thought you said this was a cut and dried sanity hearing. Well, I thought it was, Your Honor. <clears throat> In view of Mr. Daly's statement, I'll have to review the entire background of the case. Court adjourned till tomorrow morning. Hello, Doris. I'm sorry I'm late, but get ready. We're really going to celebrate tonight. What are we celebrating? Well, didn't you hear the papers? Santa's mouthpiece throws bombshell in New York Supreme Court. Oh, Fred, you're not really serious about this. You can't possibly prove that Chris Kringle is Santa Claus. Well, you saw Mr. Mason and Mr. Gimble shake hands. That wasn't possible either. What does your firm have to say about it? Hayslip and Mackenzie and the rest of them? That I've, uh, jeopardized their prestige, and either I drop this impossible case, or they'll drop me. You see? So I beat him to it. I quit. Fred! You threw away a career because of a sentimental whim? Well, I'll open my own office. And what kind of clients will you get? Oh, probably a lot of people like Chris who are being pushed around. That's the only fun of law anyway. Doris, look. Don't you have any faith in me at all? Oh, it's not a question of faith. It's, it's just common sense. But faith is believing in things when common sense tells you not to. It's not just Chris that's on trial. It's everything he stands for. Human kindness, and love, and dignity. Oh, Fred, listen. We've seen a lot of each other over the last couple of weeks. I, well, I've become fond of you. We've talked about some wonderful plans, haven't we? And then you do this. Go on an idealistic binge, throw away your security, and expect me to be happy about it. And I expect too much. Is that it? Well, that's that, I guess. Good night, Doris. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Mara. Well, can't wait till tomorrow meeting to... Who's been subpoenaed? Well, how do you think I feel about it? I'll see you tomorrow! R.H. Macy's been subpoenaed. Oh, my. Those reporters, they make me look like a sadistic monster who likes nothing better than to drown pussycats and tear wings off butterflies. Shh, quiet, dear. Tommy's still away. Oh, oh, yeah. It'd just break his heart if he knew what his daddy is doing. I'm doing my job as assistant district attorney. Well, I'm not so sure, but that I agree with him. Mr. Kringle looks like a very nice old man, and I don't see why you have to keep persecuting him. I'm not persecuting him, I'm prosecuting him. I like the old man too, but there's nothing I can do about it. You know something, Thomas? Sometimes I wish I'd married a plumber, or a butcher. <laughs> well, if I lose this case, it's very possible you'll get your wish! R.H. <laughs> Macy, I wonder what he's gonna pull tomorrow. Well, proceed with the witness, Mr. Gailey. Now then, Mr. Ma, if you recognize the defendant, please tell us who he is. Why, Chris Crinkle, of course. And do you believe him to be of sound mind? Sound mind? I wish I had a dozen like him. Mr. Macy, you are under oath. Do you believe that man is Santa Claus? Well, no, that's a rather uh, delicate, uh, mm, uh, Just think of the headlines tomorrow. Macy admits that Santa Claus is a fraud. You keep out of this, Gimbo. <laughs> what did you say? Uh, d d d nothing, Mr. Mara, nothing. Well, I wish you would. Is that man Santa Claus? Yes. I in my opinion, he most certainly is. <laughs> There is no such person as Santa Claus, and everybody knows it. Can you prove there isn't any? I won't even try. I'll not waste the court's time with such childish nonsense. Your Honor, the prosecution requests an immediate ruling from this court. Is there or is there not a Santa Claus? Well, now, I, uh, 
the court will have to, have to take a short recess to consider the question. Should anyone need me, I'll be in my chambers. Hello, Henry. Why, Charlie, what are you doing here? Can't no friend visit you in your chambers? And if you ask me, you never needed a friend like you do now. This Kringle case? Oh, I don't certainly see what they're making all the fuss about. Henry, that's Santa Claus you've got out there on trial for lunacy. This case is dynamite, and you're coming up for re-election soon. <laughs> Charlie, do you know what happened to me last night? Martha brought the grandchildren over. They, they wouldn't even kiss Grandpa. They wouldn't even talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> see what I mean? If you rule there is no Santa Claus, you'd better start looking for that pig farm right now. <laughs> I'm a responsible judge. How can I seriously rule that there is a Santa Claus? Because of what happens if you don't. The kids read about it and they don't hang up their stockings. Now what happens to all those toys? They're supposed to be in those stockings. Nobody buys them. The toy manufacturers have to lay off employees. By now you've got the AF of L and the CIO against you. Yeah, and they're going to say it with votes, see? Oh, and the department stores are going to love you too. Yes, sir, Henry. And what about Salvation Army? They got Santa Claus on every street corner. They take in a lot of money to help the poor. But you go ahead, Henry. You go in there and rule there isn't any Santa Claus. But if you do, you can count on getting just two votes, your own and that district attorney's out there. One vote, Charlie. He, he's a Republican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's get this over. Oh. There, uh, the uh, question of Santa Claus seems to be uh, uh, largely a matter of opinion. The, uh, the tradition of uh, American justice demands a broad and unprejudiced view of such a controversial matter. But you're on! The court, therefore, intends to keep its mind open. We shall ask for evidence on either side. But the burden of proof clearly rests with my opponent. Can he produce any evidence to support his views? If your honor, please, I can. Will Mr. Ma please take the stand? Thomas Ma Jr. I believe he and his mother are both in court today. Hi, Mama! Hi. Tommy, do you believe in Santa Claus? I sure do! Gosh, he gave me a brand new sled last year! Now, uh, what does Santa Claus look like, Tommy? Well, he's sitting right over there! Wow. 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 Right. Your Honor, I protest! Overruled! Tell me, Tommy, uh, why are you so sure there's a Santa Claus? Because my papa told me so! Didn't you, Bob? <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. You can go back to your mother now. See you later, Papa! You certainly will. You're oh, my God, Santa Claus! I got a blue helmet this year! <laughs> don't worry, Tommy. You'll get it. Mr. Kringle, if you don't mind. I'm sorry, sir. You're on. The state of New York concedes the existence of a Santa Claus. But in so conceding, we demand that Mr. Gailey stop representing and presenting personal opinion as evidence. I insist he submit authority to prove that Mr. Kringle here is the one and only Santa Claus. Well, Mr. Gailey, are you prepared to show that Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus on the basis of unprejudiced authority? Well, Yana, yeah, no, not now. I, I need a little time. Why not now? Tomorrow, Yana. Yeah. Very well. Court adjourned till tomorrow morning. Oh, brother. <laughs> now come, Susan, dear. Finish your supper. But I can't, Mother. All the you're saying in the newspapers about Mr. Kringle and Mr. Gailey? They're having this trial because he says he's Santa Claus. He's so, he's so kind and nice and job. It's not like anyone else I know. He must be Santa. You know something? I think perhaps you're right. Mr. Kringle's sad now, Mother. I'm afraid he must be. Then I'll write him a letter. Maybe that'll make him feel better. I'll cheer him up. Oh, uh, post. 
Postman, postman. Yeah, lady. Would you mind taking this letter? Oh, sure, lady. We're going straight down to the post office now. Okay, Louie, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you know, Louie? Another letter for Santa Claus. Hey, here's a new one. Instead of the North Pole, this kid's got an address to Chris Pringle, New York County Courthouse. Well, the kid's right. Huh? Oh, yeah, sure. They got him on trial down there. He claims he's Santa Claus, and the DA claims he's nuts. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, I got an idea. Yeah? How many Santa Claus letters we got down there in the dead letter office? Oh, who knows? Must be 50,000. Bags and bags all over the joint. Hey, yummy. Well, Louie, why not? Wouldn't it be nice to get rid of them all? Wouldn't it? Boy, oh boy. Look, Louie, as soon as we get to the post office, we go and see the supervisor. You know something? I bet we both get promoted. <laughs> <laughs> And since the defense has been unable to submit one shred of proof that Kris Kringle is the one and only Santa Claus, and since tonight is Christmas Eve, I ask your honor that this hearing be terminated without further delay. Your honor, I protest. I do have evidence. Five minutes ago, you said you didn't. During Mr. Morrow's oration, the bailiff handed my client the evidence I referred to. What evidence? This letter, your honor. Oh, yes, Mr. Kringle. It's from Susan Walker. She believes in me. Oh, this letter means more to me than anything in the world. That letter, Your Honor, was delivered by the United States Post Office, an official agency of the federal government. The Post Office Department is one of the largest business concerns in the world. Last year did a gross volume of over $1 billion, and this year... Your Honor, I'm sure we're all gratified that the Post Office is getting along so well. <laughs> but what bearing has it on the sanity of that man? My point is that the Post Office Department is a model of efficiency. Furthermore, the laws of this country make it a criminal offense to willfully misdirect mail or intentionally deliver it to the wrong party. The state of New York is second to none in its admiration of the post office department. We're very happy to concede, Mr. Gailey. Uh, for the record, Mr. Gailey. For it's the record, uh, anything to get on with this case! Thank you. Your Honor, that letter just received by Mr. Kringle is positive proof that a competent... One letter is hardly positive proof. I have further exhibits, Your Honor, but I... I hesitate to produce them. Come, come, Mr. Gailey. Put them on here on my desk. Thank you. But, Your Honor... I said put them on my desk. All right, boys, bring them in. <laughs> Your, Your Honor, what, what is this? Empty those mail sacks on Judge Hopper's desk. Uh, well, uh, what Bring them you? all in or be fined for contempt of court. Oh. Now, just a second here. Ah, we'll do it, Your Honor. True rain, true sleep, true courtrooms, anything <laughs> we deliver. Mr. Daly. Your Honor, every one of those letters and every one of those mail sacks is addressed to Santa Claus. The post office delivered them. Therefore, the post office department recognizes Chris Kringle to be the one and only Santa Claus. Since the United States government declares this man to be Santa Claus, the court will not dispute it. Case dismissed. And for heaven's sake, get this mail out of my court. So as soon as I got out of court, I came straight to Macy's to see you, Doris. Oh, Chris, I'm so glad you won. <sighs> Well, we're having a big party at the Brooks' home tomorrow morning. I'd like so much to see you and Susan there. We'll be there, Chris. Oh, Chris, couldn't you, couldn't you come home now and have dinner with us? Now? Tonight? Me? My goodness, Doris, it's, it's Christmas Eve. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Mr. Gimble, too. Oh, excuse me, Alfred. Mrs. Walker and Susan have to leave now, and I wanted to see them before they go. So forgive me, will you? Oh, and by the way, you're doing a great job at Santa Claus. Thanks, Chris. That means a lot coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
Susie, darling, you got so many presents. Not the one I wanted. Not the one Mr. Pringle was going to get for me. Well, what was it? It doesn't matter. I knew I wouldn't get it. I thought he'd at least tell me why. Susie? I'm sorry, Susie. I tried my best, but... You couldn't get it because you're not Santa Claus. Susan! It's a nice little man, like Mother said. But I was wrong when I told you that. You must believe in Mr. Kringle and keep right on doing it. You must have faith in him. But that doesn't make sense, Mother. Faith is believing in things when common sense tells you not to. What? I mean, just because things don't turn out the way you want them to the first time, you've still got to believe in people. I found that out. <laughs> Hello, Doris. Fred. Mr. Gailey, Mr. Gailey. Merry Christmas, Susie. Gosh, you just get here, I'm ready to leave. Oh, I've, I've been here. Oh. And if you're ready to leave, I'll drive you home. Before you go, here. Here's a map I've made for you. You'll miss a lot of traffic. About four miles south, you'll see Ashley Avenue. Now that's the street you want, Ashley Avenue. Thanks, Chris. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Fred. And to you, my dear, and to you, Susan. I believe in the Pringle. I do. It's silly as a post, but I do. I don't understand it, friend. The map Chris gave definitely says Ashley Avenue. We've been on Ashley Avenue for about- Stop the car! Stop the car, please! Susie, what is it, darling? What's the matter? There it is! The house! The house! Susie! Uh, what in the world? She's running into that house. <laughs> well, at least there's no one home. It's brand new. It's just been built. Yeah. For sale, it says. For sale. What on earth is that child up to? Susie! Hey, Susie! Here I am, upstairs. Now come right down. You know you shouldn't run around in other people's houses. That's strange. I'll say. No, no, I mean this house. I've seen this house somewhere. I know I have. Maybe in a magazine? Or... Mother, it's our house. It's the one I asked him for, Mr. Kringle. Mr. Kringle? I know it is. You were right, Mommy. You were right. Susie? Mommy told me that things didn't turn out just the way you want them at first. You still gotta believe. And I kept believing. And you were right, Mommy. Mr. Kringle is Santa Claus. Now where are you going? In Max, there's just a swing. There is one, there is one. You told me that, about believing. Well, you told me, Fred. <laughs> the sign outside, for sale, huh? Well, we can't let it down, can we? I never really doubted you. It was just my silly common sense. <laughs> Even makes sense to believe in me now. I must be a pretty good lawyer. <laughs> I take a little old man and legally prove to the world that he's Santa Claus. Now, you know that he couldn't possibly be. Fred! What's the matter? There, in the corner, by the fireplace. Oh no. No. It can't be. It, it couldn't. A cane? Chris's cane? Why, there couldn't be two canes like this anywhere in the world. Silver handle and all. Hey, you know something? Maybe I didn't do such a wonderful thing after all. Before our stars return for curtain calls, Libby Fondue wants to tell you about the wonderful way to decorate your Christmas tree as we promised at the opening of the show. You can give your tree that fresh from the woods look by covering it with real looking snow you make yourself from a box of Lux Flakes. So many people have asked for the Lux recipe for Christmas snow that we gave away last week. We'll repeat it tonight. Listen carefully. Take a large box of Lux Flakes, gradually add about two cups of lukewarm water, and beat with an egg beater until it has the consistency of thick whipped cream. Then, with your fingers, spread the mixture over the branches of your tree, and that's all! The snowy covering dries quickly. It won't melt and lasts as long as the tree. Ask your store clerk for a copy of this Christmas snow recipe. I don't know of any other decoration that costs so little, yet does so much for your tree. It looks lovely used just with tree lights, or you can add your usual ornaments if you prefer. Try it on your mantle decorations and table arrangements, too. It gives them a very professional look. And makes the whole house look more now, I'll repeat that recipe. Take a large box of Lux Flakes, gradually 
add about two cups of lukewarm water and beat with an egg beater. While moist, spread the mixture along the branches. If you want extra glitter, shake on some shiny artificial snow before the mixture dries. Let the children help. They'll love doing it and love the snowy tree. And now back to our producer, Buddy Persons. <laughs> Mr. Kringle's reindeer are waiting on the roof, but we've asked him to pause a moment before he leaves and come back to the footlights with our Lux players. Lippy Fondue, Maud Boschevine, and this week's guest stars, Natalie Balsa, Maureen McCall, and Max Payne. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you all agree that it was a special treat to hear the premiere performance of our own Chris Kringle. Nick, come on out here and have, take a bow, Nick. Nick? Nick to the stage, please. Nick. Before we meet again in the theater, the most joyful day in the year will have come and gone. There are, in our times as in every time, a few foolish men who derive the spirit of Christmas. But in every country, and in every time, they are overwhelmed by those who find in the hope and happiness of the future, by those of us who believe in our hearts that there can be peace on earth and goodwill among men. On behalf of the Lehman Brothers Company, and all of us here in the Lux WCCP Radio Theater, may I wish all you and yours the happiest of holidays. <laughs>